Hey everybody, it's Mr. Eisenstam, and we have cells coming up, okay? We just finished taxonomy, and now we're headed into cells. Specifically today, we're learning about cell theory, prokaryotes, and eukaryotes, okay? So this is just our introduction to cells, some of the most important vocabulary, and kind of a sneak peek at the new things that we're going to wind up looking at um, and diving into. So um, a few of these words are going to be familiar, like prokaryote, um, no nucleus, eukaryote has a nucleus okay um, these are some of the basic things but uh, yeah let's get going so there we go uh, what is a cell so the first thing we're going to look at is uh, just what is a cell we learn this in characteristics of life but it's the most basic um, unit of life okay they build together to make multicellular organisms like you and I all right otherwise we have our single cellular things too like this is an amoeba or um, we have some prokaryotes as well. We have some type of bacteria as well that we're showing. So um, things are either going to be unicellular, yep, which are these top two, or multicellular, which are the things that you're more, more familiar with and the things that you see in, in your everyday life, okay? So um, there's a really cool video just to look at kind of how do we observe cells for the first time, looking at Robert Hooke. Um, in 1665, all the way back then, we were already interested in looking into um, and discovering cells. Okay, um, as cells are pretty pretty difficult to discover because they are so dang small. Okay, and so we needed um, the microscope. Okay, um, so we needed the Anton van Leeuwenhoek <coughs> to uh, discover the microscope or an early version of it, so that we had a better opportunity to see. Um, living things in pond water okay as, as you can see um, that is something that he looked into all right so these are a lot of uh, famous scientists and some of the things that they contributed um, that really make up our um, cell theory I'll just show, show that slide real quick but uh, basically we have this idea of cells in 1665 10 years later we we see tiny living things in pond water using um, microscope or the first versions of a microscope um, then we're able to um, realize that plants are made of cells, animals are made of cells, and that all new cells are produced from existing cells. So cells are going to reproduce. These tiny little things are going to reproduce and make bigger, make up larger um, things. So, so this is where we get all of our cell theory. Um, this is the slide that you want to highlight, underline, star, whatever you want. Um, but one, two, and three are going to be quite a few questions that you're going to wind up seeing on our assessments. All right, cells are the basic unit of life. All right, just think of uh, our characteristics of life. All right, um, all living things are made up of cells, whether it be a plant, an animal, um, whatever is living is made up of cells. And then new cells are produced from existing cells. All right. So you keep those three things in mind. They're very, very similar. But just remember, there's got to be three of them. So cells are the basic unit of life. All things are made up of cells. They kind of go together. And then in order to get new living things, you got to get them from cells. All right? So let's keep on going. We had a couple different microscopes. Um, but uh, the light microscope was a big deal for us as we could see up to a 1,000 times the size. We uh, used some light microscopes in class here. Um, coming up we'll be looking at some cells when you guys get back from break but if you want to talk a million and you know hundreds of million dollar microscopes then you can start looking at the electron microscope which is going to magnify things up to a million times um, and so it's able to take a look at um, electrons within um, well it uses electrons and we, we don't need to learn exactly how it works but basically it really enlarges the or pushes the uh, scope of what we can actually see. And so it's really, really cool. Um, obviously, there's a big difference between a thousand and a million times, right? So we're able to really see what's going on, um, albeit uh, through some computer imaging and such. So it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, take a peek at it if you are interested. All right, so let's dive into really the bulk of the slideshow. But basically, um, we're looking at cells, and we got two different types. Okay, we got prokaryotes. I've been saying pro is no nucleus. It's kind of how I like to remember it. But the way that you can remember it is pro meaning before a nucleus, meaning there was no nucleus. You see the DNA is just free floating in here. There's no nucleus um, to organize it. And so prokaryotic cells are going to be our oldest cells. And so prokaryotic before a nucleus, they do not have one. Whereas you, 
eukaryotic cells, you meaning true, I like to say you and then I like to point to, to students in the room because we are eukaryotic, all right? Um, because we have a nucleus, we're able to organize our DNA and we're able to um, become a much more complex and larger cell. And so this is super, super important because um, all eukaryotic, not all eukaryotic cells, but eukaryotic cells are, have the ability um, to, to work together and become a multicellular organism like us, okay? Um, so let's keep on going. <clears throat> let's dive into eukaryotes and kind of reiterate a lot of the things we've already said. But we have a nucleus. That's going to allow us to, um, to organize ourselves a lot better. Um, and so that is going to allow us to become bigger and more complex. All right. We are going to have membrane-bound organelles. Again, we are organizing. Think of organelles as organs. Like we have a heart. We have um, blood. We have um, a stomach. We have all these different things that work together within our body to keep us alive. Cells have a very similar setup. Okay, They have a bunch of organs or organelles as it is for for cells that are going to help do certain functions and keep them alive, all right? So the Golgi, Golgi apparatus, um, the endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, we're going to learn all about those um, in a later day, okay? Um, we also have DNA. DNA is double-stranded forms form of chromosomes, okay? It's highly organized, and um, we have uh, this double-sided we use that because it's a lot easier to um, keep safe. It doesn't break down very easily. And we, the DNA is kind of like the um, instructions for what we should do with our cell and how it should operate. So it's super, super important to us and that we don't mess it up. Um, we, and eukaryotes can be either unicellular or multicellular organisms. Okay, so animals, plants, fungi, and then uh, the domain of protista, um, pretty important stuff for eukaryotes. All right, so pro, prokaryotes, pro meaning before the nucleus, or pro means no, as I like to say, no nucleus. All right, um, it is not membrane bound because it's not organized and it's not as complex as eukaryotes. Okay, they're all unicellular because they, they aren't organized well enough. They, they don't organize themselves well enough, so they can't really work together with other cells as much. Okay, they're much smaller because of this as well. Um, they are the forerunner to eukaryotic cells, meaning that there were prokaryotic cells before there were eukaryotic cells, hence the pro before a nucleus. Okay, DNA, um, single strand or circular. So this means that there is something called RNA, um, which is a much um, not as stable DNA that is used or genetic material that is used. And so <clears throat> basically um, it's bacteria can have a lot more mutations they don't take care of their dna isn't as protected obviously because there's no nucleus and so um, they can have yeah a lot more mutations or have things go wrong with their dna um, and so this includes all bacteria that we run into okay um, here's another really good video for you to take a look at prokaryote versus eukaryotic cells um, and just kind of having the similarities and comparisons between them. But uh, these are the similarities. There's five things that they have in common. Um, they have all the biomolecules. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the class, but lipids meaning fats, carbs, proteins, nucleic acids. These are all the things that we eat um, and consume in our diets, but as well um, all the things that make up every molecule in our bodies. Okay, Ribosomes are where... You create proteins within your cell, okay, by using DNA as instruction. Speaking of DNA, we have DNA, okay. There's a similar way that we break down energy, okay. So we use um, the same metabolism or cellular respiration in order to get energy, all right. And then we, both eukaryotes and prokaryotes, can be unicellular, um, and then we have uh, cell or plasma membranes. Okay, um, or a cell wall in the case of a plant. All right, and so the those membranes allow things to be within the cell and float around, um, and so that is the similarities between the two. So let's keep on going. Here's kind of a picture, and you can see in things that I want to point out. Okay, you can see how things are super organized. All right, over here, whereas things are just kind of spread out over over in the prokaryotic cell, and because of that. <laughs> When things are super organized, everyone's got a certain role and everyone performs really efficiently. Okay, so um, with the eukaryote, we're able to have certain parts of the cell, mitochondria, that are dedicated to helping us get energy. 
okay, whereas the nucleus uh, is containing our DNA. Um, and then our endoplasmic reticulum is helping build certain proteins. But uh, prokaryotic cells, okay, they just have free floating DNA. It's just chilling there, all right? It allows them to pick up new DNA pretty easily, but it, it also doesn't keep it protected and doesn't um, allow for super complex things to happen with um, prokaryotes, okay? Um, lastly, I just, you might, you can, obviously, if you go into the your own power, PowerPoint, you can click here to get the full slide, but um, this is just a comparison between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and then eventually we're going to go really into detail between plant and animal. So this is a really good chart that's going to age well because we're going to learn all about all of these organelles um, that compare plants and animals. So you can see DNA, ribosomes, cytoplasm, cell membrane, cell wall in the case of plants and uh, prokaryotes. Th we have them all in common. All right. Now we go to the next level, which is going to be eukaryotes, and and just looking at the difference between plant and animal cells. And so we have some certain um, organelles that are only for um, plants or only for animals, all right? But you can kind of compare and see that there's a role that, to be played by every single one of these. All right, make sure if you have any questions to uh, shoot us a Schoology message um, and or save them for class. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Peace.